Hello, my name is Shantam and welcome to my talk on rapidly emulating professional visualizations from the New York Times in Python using Altair. In this brief talk, you will learn how you can go from data to an effective and interactive graphic that appeared in the New York Times and subsequently The Economist. The focus of this talk is Altair. So what is Altair? Altair is a declarative statistical visualization library based on Vegalite and the Grammar of Graphics paradigm. Let's understand what Vegalite, Grammar of Graphics and Declarative mean. Vegalite is a high level grammar of interactive graphics. In Vegalite, you make your charts by writing them as a JSON syntax. Vegalite then compiles that JSON into the visualizations that you see. For example, this JSON produces this scatter plot. Altair is basically a Python API to create these valid JSON specifications using a declarative approach. Grammar of Graphics is a very powerful paradigm that allows you to construct any visualization from a combination of a, of a few fundamental building blocks, just like Lego. The fundamental building blocks are data, transformation, marks, encoding, scale, guides. Declarative visualization is the opposite of imperative visualization. A good example of imperative visualization package is Matplotlib. Now, imperative cares about how while declarative cares about what thus in declarative visualization you declare the logic of what end result you want to see rather than writing the detailed control flow steps the key takeaway uh, here is that just like ggplot2 is to r so is altair to python both are declarative and based on grammar of graphics because of this declarative approach implemented via a concise grammar, you can create a massive range of simple to complex visualizations and do very quick explorations and navigation of multifaceted datasets. Let's see how this declarative approach is quick, easy and intuitive. In Altair, basic visualizations use the following pattern. You import Altair as ALT and then call alt.chart.markline.encode.properties.interactive, maybe .project and some configurations. So your chart is basically a continuous chain of method calls or building blocks. Remember grammar? You start with the data and pass it to the first building block, which is the chart class. Then you think about what kind of marks would best represent your data points mark area, maybe mark bar, mark point, mark line. The choice of mark determines the type of chart you are going to see. So there are no templates or categories of plots, but a grammatical specification of what you want to see of what you want to see on the screen. Next, we have to figure out what visual encodings is most effective for my data. So you specify how to map the columns of the data frame to the visual properties of the chart like X axis, Y axis, color, these are also called as encoding channels. Some of the encoding channels supported by Altair are x-axis, y-axis, latitude, longitude. Encodings like facet, row and column help us in creating subplots. Finally, you specify chart-wide properties or configurations and interactivity. The API construction is such that all the aesthetics that are not specific to the data but to the general looks of the mark go in mark methods like mark line. The mappings from data to properties of chart always go in the encode. And finally, the properties that affect the chart as a whole and are independent of mark properties or data like height, width, go in the end in properties. To get the hang of it before the actual plot, let's see this interact declarative API in action on a weather data set. This data set contains weather from 2012 to 2015 for Seattle and New York. The columns are location, date, precipitation, temperature maximum, temperature minimum, wind and weather type. Now let's explore how temperature varies throughout the years. We specify the date data in the chart class. Let's choose mark as point. Then in encoding, we specify x axis to date y-axis to temperature maximum and here is the interesting part to make a subplot so that we get two charts for the two cities we just map column or facet to location and Altair takes care of the rest because we chose mark as point we get a faceted scatter plot now we may want to show uh, locations with different colors how do we do that 
we just map color encoding to location and we get two separate colors for seattle and new york if we want to find the distribution of temperature maximum for both the cities the way we arrive at that histogram is that x axis maps to temperature and on y axis we aggregate count of temperature finally we use mark bar altair allows us to use aggregates like mean median mode sum etc we can also easily make compound charts using plus or and and operators let's say you want to see how precipitation varies with wind and you want a linear regression chart adjacent to the scatter plot you make the chart separately scatter plot is easy we make the regression and then we use the or operator to get them side by side but wouldn't it be cool if we can plot the regression line on top of the scatter plot you can absolutely do that via layering you do that using the plus operator now let's visualize the new york times covid data set the data from new york times github repository has five columns date county state cases deaths and fips fips is just a unique uh, numerical identifier for counties so on a given date we get cases and deaths at a county level for each state let's make maps the main thing you need to know is that your x and y axes get replaced by latitude and longitude and that there is a geometric call for maps you need a special file called shape file and you read it just like a pandas data frame but using a package called geo pandas the only difference between a data frame and a geo data frame is that geo data frames contain a mandatory geometric column that basically has the map geometry information so we download and load the county shape file from us census you just calculate the longitude and the latitude of the centroids of the counties because your circles uh, or spikes will need to be at that position to represent statistics about that region so the final data frame looks like this all the columns we need plus the geometric column when we plot it without any encoding we get this this does not look like the map of usa but it actually is the maps we are familiar with is a projected map so we project our map to albers usa projection by specifying the projection in the end much better let's plot the cases per capita on this map to do that we just take the population data from us census today's cases across the us divide them and then merge with the geo data frame then we just say color it by cases per capita now this chart by new york times is not a simple chart we will make this chart by layering circle marks on top of the geo shape plot the base map is the first map we saw with no encoding on top of that we layer a circle chart where circles are centered on the latitude and longitude of the centroids of the counties that we had calculated before and their size encoding is uh, maps to the cases and then we use the plus operator and by the way getting tool tips is as easy as mapping a list of columns to the tool tip encoding as you can see here well this does not quite look like the visualization by new york times however we can make it look like that by changing the scale what we are seeing is actually accurate but the issue is that the range of values of cases is very large and by default this is what altair comes up with if we contract our domain altair increases the relative size of circles if you experiment you will find that a domain of 0 to 10000 works really well and since we want this for size that is where we specify scale equals to alt.scale domain 0 to 10000 and we get this now this is much better remember we used to specify encodings as strings in actuality every encoding is a class and that allows you to tweak it as you like now what we see in this new york times chart is a custom shape in altair the cool part of mark point is that it allows you to create your own custom shapes like a star or a balloon and in our case a triangle without a base using an svg path this svg path string represents this triangular spike this minus 5 in the middle is what controls the height of the spike so when we run this code by specifying uh, this svg string for the shape property of mark point we get this but wait we are seeing changes in area not height the reason it does that is because we perceive changes in area better but we only want the heights of the spikes to change so how do we solve this unfortunately we don't have a scale y encoding 
if we had that we would have just specified that encoding for cases what if we make a new column made up of those svg path strings with changing heights for each data point we can then map that column to shape encoding because technically every spike can be thought of as a unique shape but when we do that we get this if you look closely it's just circles and diamonds crosses and rectangles what happens is that Altair sees your string column as a category and starts scaling it to a specific set of default symbols. But we can say that do not use the default symbols or the scale. I want you to scale the data using this particular column while drawing the points. We do that by setting scale to none in the shape encoding for the new column. And voila. We can just as easily make an interactive plot to see how the virus hotspots progress over time.